Till now we have completed static, dynamic, causal and non-causal discrete time systems and in this lecture we will understand how to find out if the given discrete time system is a time invariant system or a time variant system and we will begin our discussion by understanding what is time invariant and time variant discrete time systems. For time invariant systems, the input output characteristics of the system do not change with time shifting. So whenever you have a discrete time system, let's say this system and it is time invariant in nature, then if you perform the time shifting on the input, then you will have the same type of shifting in the output. And therefore, we can say that the input output characteristics of the system do not change with time shifting. For example, in this case, we are having Xn as the input to the time invariant system. And for this input, we are getting output Yn. Now in the next case, we are taking the same system, we are having the same time invariant system, but this time we are having the input xn minus k. So there is, there is time delay, time delay by k. Now in this scenario, according to the rule, we should have the output which is delayed by the same amount. So we have yn minus k. Therefore, we have the same input output characteristics. We have already been through a lot of discussions on time invariant and time variant systems while studying the continuous time systems and there we solved many examples and after solving those examples we obtained three important conclusions. So now we will quickly revise those conclusions and we will only use the conclusions we have to solve the problems. So let's move on to the conclusions we are having. According to this, for a system, for a system to be time invariant, these three conditions must be satisfied. According to the first condition, there should be no time scaling. Pretty straightforward condition, there should be no time scaling. And if this happens, we can say that the system we are having is time invariant. But we should also check the second and third conditions. According to the second condition, the coefficients we are having in the system relationship should be constant and according to the third condition if there is any added or subtracted term in the system relationship then it should be constant or zero so let's move on to our examples to understand how to find out if the system is time invariant or time variant using these conditions in the first example output yn is equal to x to n. Now this example is very easy because we can see that here there is time scaling. There is time scaling. You can see that n is scaled by 2 and according to the first condition there should be no time scaling and as there is time scaling the system having this output and input relationship is going to be time variant. So this is the answer. Now you can see that how easily you can answer the questions if you know these three conditions. Let's move on to the second example. In this example, output yn is equal to cos n multiplied to input xn. Now cos n we are having here is coefficient. This is the coefficient and the coefficient we are having is the function of n and when n changes cos n will also change. Therefore 
the coefficient we are having here is not at all constant it is not constant and according to the condition number two coefficient should be constant and as coefficient is not constant the system is time variant now let's move on to the example number three in this example output yn is equal to input xn plus two times n now in the system relationship you can see that there is output there is input and there is one added term this is the added term and according to the third condition added or subtracted term should be constant or zero here we are having twice of n this means it is not constant it is not constant because when n changes 2n will also change so it is variable and therefore the system we are having is time variant let's move on to the fourth and the last example in this example output yn is equal to summation k equal to minus infinity to n x k and we already know the last term of this summation is going to be x n and therefore we will analyze the relation between y n and x n and here you can see that there is no time scaling so we are done with the first condition it is satisfied and there is also no coefficient so we are good with the second condition as well and also there is no added or subtracted term so we are good with the third condition therefore this time the system is time invariant so i think these four examples are sufficient to make you understand how to use these conditions let's move on to the homework problems there are four homework problems in the first problem output yn is equal to x minus n you need to tell whether the system having this relationship between output and input is time invariant or time variant in the second problem we are having output yn equal to cos of input xn let's move on to the third homework problem in this case output yn is equal to summation k equal to minus infinity to n x twice of k in the fourth homework problem yn is equal to summation k equal to minus infinity to n cos k multiplied to x k so try to solve the four problems and once you have your answers post them in comment section